Hey everybody, welcome back to the next part of my dialing in series for our Line 6 Helix. Today I'm taking a look at another one of my favorite legacy effects from the Line 6 Helix and HX Stomp, etc. And that is the Tron Up filter model. Now some of you might ask what the Tron Up filter model is. Well, if we go to the model gallery of the Line 6 model gallery manual for the Line 6 HD 500, we see here it says the Tron Up is inspired by the Mutron 3 envelope follower in the up position. Part auto, uh, part triggered filter, it's all about wacky. So that's how it's described. So it says it's inspired by the Mutron 3 effect. And one thing I did is I tracked down the original owner's manual of, of the Mutron 3 pedal and I kind of compared it to the controls that we have and the Helix version of the Tron Up. Now, they are somewhat different, so this is why I think Linesec said this was inspired by it, and you'll get sort of similar effect quality from it. But let's dive in and see what the controls are, and we'll compare it to the original manual, then we'll talk about how we can actually dial it in. So off to HX Edit we go. So what I've done here is I've set up a really basic preset uh, based off of my template. I turned the delay off for now. We won't even bother with this. I have my LA Studio Comp, uh, parametric EQ just doing high and low cuts, reverb delay is off and a high and low shelf, just what I normally start things with. And I threw on an instance of the Play Cater Clean with the 412 Greenback 25. Now if I turn the uh, Tron up off, which I added here after the amp, this is the sound we get. Sounds fine. This is through my Vigier Expert guitar. Now, what we have here when we look at the Tron Up is we have the controls frequency, Q, range, type, mix, and level. But now if we go over and take a look at the original Mutron 3 operating instructions, here it shows obviously we have a power switch, a drive switch, range switch, gain, peak, and mode. So if we compare that to what we have on the Helix version, the drive switch is going to be either down or up. Well, you'll notice here on the Tron Up, it's called the Tron Up. So this is mimicking the Mutron 3 with that drive switch in the up position. We also have, if you look here, a Tron Down. So we actually have a dedicated model block for the up version and the down version. I'm just working with the up version for this video. So that takes care of the drive switch. Now it has the range switch, low and high. And it says the range switch emphasizes vowel-like sounds in the low position and the overtones in the high position. So we can do that over here on our range control, either low or high. So we're going to get more of the vowel sounds with the low setting and more of these overtones in the high setting. Now it has a gain function also on the original. It says functions as both a volume control and the sensitivity control for the Mutron effect. Now over here we don't have a gain control. What we do have is a frequency control, but we'll talk about that in a minute. We do have an overall level control, but that's gonna be different than gain. We also have a peak control on the original. It says this control determines the strength of the Mutron effect. Effect becomes stronger as the control is turned clockwise. From what I've looked into, the Q function on the Tron Up with the Line 6 is going to act mostly at that. With lower settings, it's going to be slightly less strong effect, and with it higher up to 100, it's going to be higher. The Q probably actually, as far as I can tell, is it's taking the frequency and at the higher settings, really narrowing it to a particular frequency rather than at lower Q settings, broadening that frequency out, much like a Q control would work on an EQ, which I've talked about many times in a lot of my EQ videos. Then there's the mode. We have this control on the Tron Up, so it emphasizes low or bass range frequencies in the LP setting or low pass position, mid range in BP or band pass position, and treble or high frequency in the portion of the sound in the HP or high pass position. So again, we have these low pass, band pass, and high pass settings. So let's see what some of these do. Again, here is the sound with the Tron Up off. Now, if I turn that on at these settings here, So 
So a really wonderful effect that you can sort of see you could have a lot of fun with and be very creative. I've used a lot of effects like this uh, in a lot of my albums where I just want a little sweetener track, maybe panned out left or right, kind of sunk under the mix, but it kind of cuts through because of the, the filter qualities that it gives. And this stuff can really be pure gold when you're in the studio doing production and even live if you want to do something a little different to kind of uh, complement maybe what another guitar player is doing. So it was really cool stuff. So as we said, the frequency control here is going to work, I think, basically like with the, the type control here, the low pass, high pass, and... Uh, band pass. So let's go to the low pass first. Really interesting stuff. Go to the band pass. And now we'll go to the high pass. So as you can see, just like it told us in the manual, we're getting the emphasis on the lower sounds here. Mid frequencies when we're in band pass. And high frequencies when we're in high pass. going to really be up to us to set that the way we want depending on what our goals are for our sounds but I kind of tend to shy away from the high pass I don't mind band pass and low pass though a little bit fatter in the low pass setting now if we do go to something let's say band pass the frequency control I think is going to allow us then to sweep through different frequencies within the mid-range band or the band that we are in low pass will help us to, to go within a range within that and high pass also. So if we go to band pass and take our frequency control down to zero. You see it moves the frequency way down. If I crank that way up. Right in the middle. Same with if I go to low pass, go way down with it. You can hear the emphasis is on the extremely low frequencies if I crank that up. And if we go up to the high, this is going to be the extreme high end. We can go to the lower range on that. So really interesting stuff. Now the Q, let's go back to uh, band pass and maybe somewhere around there. Really cool stuff, real vocal quality to it. If we now go and change the range from low to high, remember the low is emphasizing more of that vowel sound. If we go to the high, we're going to be more into the overtones. My personal favorite is to keep it more on low to get more of those vowel sounds. So band pass, low, frequency in and around, maybe 35, 36, I'm really digging that. Now, if we take our cue and go all the way down with it. All the way up. More dramatic effect. It's really narrowed the cue of the frequency. Get a, a sharper sound to it.
So really interesting stuff uh, when putting it all the way up with a heavy, heavy cue, but I can bring that back halfway. Put it up full again. Get more of a dramatic effect. I'm really kind of liking it right there. I could even maybe bring that frequency down a bit. Now, we also have a mix control. So if you wanted that type of a thing, but maybe not so heavy, and you wanted to mix it in with your direct original signal, bringing the mix back to around 50%, Just so much fun to noodle with, really. So the, the mix control can be very powerful as well. We'll keep that at 100. And then the level control, obviously, is just going to be the master uh, output level of this effect. Two more points I want to talk about. I have the Tron Up filter after the amp. Well, what happens if we put it before the amp? I get this question a lot. Where should I place it in the signal chain? It's going to be up to each individual for the sound they want. It's so simple on the Helix, just drag it before or after. It's not like we have to unplug cables and reroute things, right? So try it one place and try another. I really like this after the amp in this particular situation. Maybe in another situation, I would want it different. But if I put it in front of the amp, let's hear what it sounds like. It doesn't have as clean a sound. Now, I guess we could come over and bring the level down so it's not hitting the front of the amp as hard. But to be quite honest with you, I was liking it after the amp in this particular situation. But again, your mileage may vary and you should use it wherever it's going to give you the sound you're looking for based off of the controls we talked about. There's really no right and wrong answer with this. Now, the other thing is there's the most important control, I think, with this effect, and it's not actually on the screen. It's right here, and especially right here in my right hand. If you notice when I was noodling around before, I can really control what this is doing because it's really reacting to my playing. Palm muting on higher notes, palm muting in general is going to be your best friend here because the note's gonna react very different to a palm mute than a non-palm muted note. Pick attack, how hard we hit the string, how light we hit the string. So some examples of that, palm muted sounds like this. Non-palm muted. Note really pops so we can control it with the palm mute. So if you can get kind of funky and go between muted and non-muted notes, how hard we play the note is also going to trigger it in a very different way. Even when we're palm muted.
So you can see how much control we have once we have our setting. These are really the most important things. Even just the mute. Mutes with our uh, left hand. Choose when you want to put your strong notes in. Create a cool, interesting rhythm with some accents with our picking hand while muting. And then just pick and choose where we apply pressure. Very cool stuff. Very responsive to what we're doing with our hands. So that's what the controls do. That's what these guys can do. I hope you liked that and I hope that that maybe inspired you to take a look at this model. Also go and check out the Tron Down model. I kind of prefer the Tron Up for some reason, just to my ear. Play around with it, positioning, play around with the different settings now that you have an understanding of what they're actually doing. I, at least I hope you do. And then really try and, um, once you get it set, be conscious of what your hands are doing and allow your hands to be another uh, basic control on our effect so that we can dial in the sounds we need and kind of understand what the different attacks and mutes and things will do. And I think you can have a lot of fun with that effect. So I hope you guys enjoyed that. Please like the video, share it with anybody who you think would get uh, enjoyment or use out of watching it. And please subscribe to the channel, hit the little bell notification to get notified when I put new content out. I will be back really soon with some more. Thank you guys again so much for tuning in. Ciao for now.